Right, folks, I'm joined on this occasion on rockpose.com by the vocalist and bass player from Hollow Star, and that is none other than Mr. Joe Bonson. Welcome to rockpose.com. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, caught you guys at the Four Sticks Classic Rock Weekend, or was it a couple of weekends ago? Unfortunately, I only caught the end of your set due to uh, other circumstances. But I've got to say, it was great to see such a positive response from the audience. Yeah, it's. Um, I suppose the, the audience is is what makes or breaks a gig. I suppose, isn't it? So, um, no, it's good. It's, it's obviously we're we're writing this music and just going out there and, and hoping people like it. So when you get a, a room full of people that receive it that well, it makes it all worthwhile. There seems to be a resurgence of British hard rock bands over sort of building up over the last four to five years or so. What do you think that is? Are people looking back to that classic sound, or is it just one of those sort of natural occurrences? I don't know, it's weird. People always say that music goes round in circles, don't they, mm. I suppose? So it, it's sort of, um, maybe it's just time that it comes back round. But it's, uh, I mean, I know from ourselves, we we decided to sort of try and get our music more out there and to more and more people because we just got fed up with what was out there. Um, everything was going down towards people on laptops and, and DJs and and less storytelling and more about just a repetitive beat. Um, so we just thought, let's start getting our music out there and let's start trying to <laughs> fly the flag for rock music. And it, it just sort of turned out, I guess everybody else had, the, had a similar sort of idea. And it's it's left the scene in a really healthy sort of way, isn't it? Well, I've got to say, uh, the good news, apart from obviously this wealth of talent coming through, is the number of younger rock fans, which of course is really healthy for the scene. Well, that's it. It's... Um, as long as there's, like I said before, it's the, it's the people that are out actually spending the money on the on the music, going to shows and, and doing stuff like that. They're the ones that make the difference because, I mean, if, if nobody comes to watch a band, then it's, it's it's very pointless, isn't it? So, But the fact that people are, younger people uh, are getting back into the rock music is, is very important because they're the next generation. That's the next generation of bands. That's, that's who my kids will go and watch and things like that. So it's um, it's massively important that we get we get the next generation up there making noise and sweating all over stages and, and playing dirty rock music. <laughs> it's just good that bands are making the effort because, let's face it, it's um, you're not going to go into this scene now because you're going to make uh, heaps of money, you're going to be a millionaire in two years' time because it's not going to happen. Um, it's just no. people are still doing it for that raw passion. But that's what it was always about, wasn't it? I think mm. music should be about the love for it. And of course. If you don't love doing it, then um, and don't do it. <laughs> there's, there's lots of people who want to be doing this and work hard. And if, if this is your passion, then throw everything else at it because the scene's strong again now. But yeah, if it's not your be-all and end-all, then this it can very quickly crush a man. So um, it's got to be something you really want, definitely. Look, I was talking about playing live. Of course, you were going out on tour with uh, the fantastic Danbury Network, a band that um, I've been a fan of, uh, yes, for more years than we should probably mention. And, of course, the wonderful Mason Hill as well. Um, I guess you guys must be really stoked and looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, no, it's, it's been good. It's going to be nice to, to get away and uh, suspend so November doing that rather than doing Christmas shopping. It's going to be very nice. Oh, God, use the C word. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's getting a bit too close now, isn't it? So we decided, well, we'll go on tour. We'll let everybody else sort it out and we'll come back when it's done. <laughs> that sounds like a very, very wise decision indeed. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. But no, it's, it's nice to get the opportunity to go with bands like that, I suppose. Um, Mason Hill, obviously, being another another band like what you're talking about from the, the sort of scene that's coming up. And I saw a video of those guys um, playing Steelhouse. Um, earlier on this year and it absolutely blew me away um, and I know a few of their tracks off of their album are in my playlist songs like Now You See Me and it's, it's, they're a really really good band and then and obviously having having somebody like Dan at the top of the bill it's um, it's a bit of an honour really to be able to get to go out and, and share a stage with people like that so no, it's exciting times I mean, Dan Reed is just such a, such a lovely, lovely guy. I uh, get on really, really well with him. Um, and live, just, well, phenomenal live band. That's where he comes into his own, I think, isn't it? It's um, We saw him at Cambridge Rock Festival. Um, yes, we were there. We saw, uh, yeah, I was the, idiot, the tall idiot down the front with the camera, so... <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's it. But uh, it's, um, 
it's another level. It's just such a he's got a huge vibe, hasn't he, Dan when he's when his live show. Yes. So you, you sort of you leave feeling like you've been right in the middle of, of a massive party and it's no, it's really, really good. So that should be uh, should be good fun. Should be good fun indeed. Well let's go back to the band, obviously its origins. Did you guys all know each other before you put the band together? What's it been? I suppose about three years now, is it? Yeah, three years gigging. Uh, about four years ago, we got the idea. But um, well, the drummer is my brother, of course. So that's um, I've been stuck with him, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and to be fair, um, Phil, the, one of the guitarists, we, me, Phil, and Jack were in um, in bands before. We were in bands since we were about thirteen, fourteen years old, playing playing around pubs and bits and bobs like that. Um, and even when when we weren't in a band together, I suppose we were we were always sort of jamming together and and talking music mm. together. So I suppose those three, it's it's always been there. Um, Tom worked with Phil actually over a period while me and Jack were travelling, um, but he's just so good that well, I mean when we we were looking for a guitarist, he started busting out a few riffs right at the beginning, and and very quickly became obvious we had our guys. So. Um, Tom sort of very quickly integrated into the group, but no, me, Jack and Phil have known each other for, for years and years, obviously me and Jack longest. So what's Hollow Style, the original band name, and who actually came up with it? It's, um, it's designed to be a little bit of a dig at, the, <laughs> at Hollow Stars, really. Um, but the music, the people you were looking around at, and people like X Factor and things like that, and we were sat looking, and they take a, they take a hollow shell of a human... They tell them what songs to sing. They tell them what bits to cry at to make the fans uh, react to their emotion. And they, they make a hollow star out of somebody with a song that they've given them. And it, that, to us, isn't a musician. That is... It's it's just manufactured. So it's a bit of a dig at the way it's been happening for a while. Um, so we we like to think that music comes from... The Dave Grohl School of Music, I think he said it once, you, being in a band is about getting together and going into into a garage and being rubbish and knowing you're rubbish and continuing to be rubbish and yep. sticking at it and sticking at it and sticking at it and eventually you get to the point where you gel together, you're so tight, you're getting the songs and it works and people feed off that. To us, it shouldn't be go stand in a queue, somebody tells you what songs to sing and you've suddenly um, on BBC Radio 1, so... It's a little bit of a dig at that kind of process, really. Well, let's face it. Most people um, go on to talent shows like that. Uh, I use the word talent quite loosely. Um, <laughs> not to be a musician, but just because they want to be a celebrity. There is probably one huge exception. That would be Nathan James. I mean, he went on talent shows simply because to get, um, shall we say, a greater audience. He certainly didn't need it for any other reasons. But apart from that, let's face it, it's all about celebrity and this... this well, I can't get my head around it anyway. This, this stupidity that seems to prevail these days. I mean, the one thing with Nathan, he, he went on The Voice at least, which, with a voice like that, at least that suits him. Yes. <laughs> because, because uh, I mean, that guy can sing, can't he, to be fair? I was um, I was chatting with him this year at, at Download after he played, and um, just saying to him, it's just one of those voices that just, as soon as he opens his lungs, you know it's him. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, uh, and a top bloke as well. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, very much so. Very much. We spent some spent some good time with him. Like I say, um, to be fair, I think his CD is actually the one that's in my car at the moment. To be fair. <laughs> Yeah, I first bumped into him will have been HH AOR, which is going back, was it three, four years ago now, and he came on stage with Jeff Scott Soto, and um, the people in the audience who weren't only familiar with him certainly were by the end of that set, I can tell you. There were a lot of jaws dropped. Yeah, no, to be fair, it's, um, you can't ignore him once you've heard him once. Uh... <laughs> well, you just can't ignore him. <laughs> and especially, to be fair, with Jeff Scott Soto as well, he's like, he's... Um... But speaking of voices, that's another hell of yeah. a voice, isn't it? Jeff's, so. Jeff's one hell of a guy and a fantastic singer and been in the business a long time. Um, but um, not a guy who, who drags an ego around with him, that's for certain. Well, that's the most important thing, isn't it? That is, um, there's no point going and feeling like you're above anybody, no matter what you're doing, I suppose, is there? So it's, it's nice that there's people still like that out there. Absolutely. 
Well, let's uh, talk about, obviously, the new single, Let You Down. Um, to say it's got a great catchy riff is probably an understatement. Uh, who are the main songwriters in the band? Uh, four of us, to be honest. Um, we all sort of have our bits that we that we sort of lend ourselves to, really. I mean, depending on the song as well. So some songs, it might be Phil comes in with a riff and he's got a real idea of this is the riff. And there's what, another one that we're writing um, at the moment, which Phil's had a complete riff idea. He's got an idea of where a build goes. He knows where he wants the chorus to go. So Phil will lead that project, but we all put our inputs in. But then there's other songs where, so like Let You Down initially, I think the riff for Let You Down was, was initially my idea was the riff. But then from that point, you need to turn it into a song. So with, I think, the middle age, Tom came up with the lyrics. I think we all sit down and come up with the... So it, it sort of all comes together, really, by... Um, by everybody putting their, their two pennies in, I guess. Of course, talking of writing, one thing that I've got to ask you is, uh, when can we expect a full album? Ooh, that is, that's, that's a million-dollar question, I uh, think, that one. Yeah, I thought <laughs> I'd put you on the spot with that one. <laughs> no, it's good. no, to be fair, but it's all under works at the moment, so um, what I can tell you is we have got most of said album recorded already. Um, it's just a case of making sure we've got the right team in place, making sure we've got the right people behind us, um, making sure we pick the right time, um, and bits and bobs like that, really. It's, um, as you know, this industry, it's, it's, it's releasing one day to the next can be the difference between getting it heard on radio and not. Yeah. Um, also, down to just simple little things like picking the right track. You might have... 10 great tracks for an album, but it's picking the right one that's the single at the right time. So, um, so no, we're now just at the position we've, um, we've got our album artwork back and we've, we're just getting everything ready, but early 2019, I would expect, I would expect there to be a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more news, should I say. Well, that's good news. At least not we're going to have to wait sort of 12 months because then I would have been annoyed. <laughs> no, no, I mean, to be honest, the plan was always to try and get something out this year. Yeah. Um, but as with anything, it's it's finding all the money and then you get one hiccup and then you get, you find yourself getting a certain opportunity. When we had the opportunity to go touring with Graham Bonnet early on in the year, we couldn't turn down that opportunity. So oh, good grief, no. Everything sort of moved around. And then um, luckily we bumped into um, or made contact, should I say, with some very useful people who are now working alongside us and, and are part of the support team for the band that are opening up a lot more doors. So for us, it makes more sense just to wait till the start of next year, let everybody get Christmas out of the way, and then um, we'll hit the ground running, shall we say. I guess the problem for a lot of bands can be, you know, you've released, you know, not just yourselves, but say the band in general, at least, you know, one or two singles, released an EP. It's taking that next leap, as it were, and sometimes it can seem a huge leap Though to people outside the industry, you know, they don't quite understand what delays are or why, um, and why bands aren't exploding onto the scene bigger than they are. It's it's not as straightforward as people think. Very much. I mean, you've got to make sure. It's the same as, I suppose, it's the same as setting up any business, isn't it? You've got to go of out. Of course. You've got to research your market. You've got to get your foot in in there, and then you've got to make sure that again, each of your product lines you're picking are the right product lines. You're marketing it well. And then when you've got people ready, ready to, I suppose, ready to hear an album, because it's easy, it's easy for anybody to go record 10 songs into their phone on an acoustic guitar at home and just put them out. But it's getting 10 songs perfectly recorded and, and sort of mastered getting the artwork and getting all the legal, legal side is where it can uh -huh. really take its time. But to me as well, an album is where... It's where when you sort of find out who has who has a lot of musical ideas and who had a song. Because through the years, how many bands have we all met that's had one good song, but they can't make a good album? Yeah. So when you sit down to make an album, I think that's that's when you really realise, right? Okay, this is how many song good songs, good enough songs we have. Um, and for us, we wanted to make sure this album really does come out with a bang, and it's we want it to wow people. We don't want any album fillers, and so it's more important for us to take the time 
to get it right because we can only release it new once. Once it's been released, we can never do it, do that again. So, no, it's a case of get it right and, and take our time, really. Well, Joe, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. I wish you guys all the best. I'm sure you're going to be huge. Um, just not just on the material, but just obviously your live set as well. Um, and I hope Thank you, you, you guys had an absolute blast and talk with Dan Reed and the boys and Mason Hill. Thank you very much. Hopefully we'll see you at a show. Let us know. We'll put a drink behind the bar for you. Cheers, Joe.